Another use for fuller radiance and path tracing is to introduce image base lighting into the scene. Of course the normal way of doing this is using the environment light. I've got a very very simple scene set up here, it's just a teapot on a grid. I've already set up a camera, but there's no lighting in the scene. So let's uh, introduce an environment light. Now, the environment light allows you to set an image map to use as the light source. Now normally uh, you'd need to create uh, an image map in the so-called lat-long format using the utility that comes with Houdini i6 pack. But fortunately there are some example uh, environments in Houdini and they're in the PIC directory and there are some samples from DOSH and the one I'm going to use is the sky uh, scene. Now that is a low resolution uh, picture but that doesn't matter in fact it's quite uh, it's quite useful to use a low resolution picture for an area map because uh, it can improve rendering times so I've set that up. Let's uh, introduce a Mantra rendering node and see what the scene looks like. As you can see it produces a really nice effect. There's quite a lot of noise which we would need to eliminate by increasing the sampling on our render here. But uh, it produces quite good shadowing and you can see here a little bit of glossy reflection of the sky. It be worth looking perhaps at that sky picture and see what it is that we're rendering from. we're using is this one and if we have a look here we can see that it's a sky with a with a sun and a large bright aura around the sun let's see how we can use full irradiance to achieve something similar to the environment light we'll get rid of the environment light and as before, I'll put down a VEX Global Illumination Shader and a Light Template. And we set the shader to the Global Illumination Shader we just laid down. Now, if we go into this shader, we're going to use for the Radiance. I'm going to reduce the samples going to turn on adaptive sampling. We can see here we've got this option for an environment map. And that essentially serves the same purpose as our environment light area map. So if I select a sky picture uh, and then render, we can see what that looks like. And here we have it. It looks reasonably similar. The environment light is a lot brighter and we get this uh, reflection, this specular reflection on the teapot. The path tracing or full irradiance uh, render is darker and we're not getting uh, the same specularity. We never will get the specularity because uh, irradiance and uh, the global illumination shader are dealing with diffuse illumination they're not dealing with specular illumination let's see whether we can make that look a little bit more like the environment light render and I'm going to do that by increasing the brightness of the global tint 
I'm going to put it up to a level of 2 and then render. And here's the result. As you can see it's got a lot brighter and it's um, in fact comparable to the environment light result. We're still not getting the specular reflection here but we wouldn't expect that. Well you may ask why bother to use um, the global illumination shader to produce this effect when you've got an environment light. Well the only advantage of the global illumination shader um, is that you can use irradiance caching in the render node to speed up your render. Let's see whether we can smooth out this result a little bit by increasing the number of samples but also switching on irradiance caching and I'm going to reduce the parameters here to produce a more accurate result and let's render that and that's producing a pretty smooth result and uh, it rendered in uh, considerably less time than would be the case without irradiant caching So I've loaded up my original scene and the final topic we're going to look at is uh, photon mapping. Now first of all an explanation of what photon mapping is about. So a word about photon map generation. What happens with photon map generation is that photons are emitted from your light sources and when they hit an object uh, a photon is stored in the photon map. It doesn't stop there, that photon is then uh, reflected off your object and might hit another object, another photon is stored and so on until the photon either shoots off into empty space or runs out of energy. The colour and energy of the photon will diminish with each reflection depending on the nature of the material that it hits. In fact, uh, a very great many photons are generated during photon map generation. It's not uncommon to have up to a million photons, each uh, of them uh, stored in your map. What happens when you come to render is that uh, when we render our point that we're interested in, irradiance rays are, are sent out, or final gathering rays, to put it another way, are sent out into the scene when they hit an object, uh, a search is made for nearby photons and that's used to calculate the indirect illumination at this point which is then used to affect the uh, intensity of the uh, illumination at uh, the point that we're shading. Note that the photon map only stores in general uh, the indirect illumination. The direct illumination is still calculated by the usual method first step of course is to generate a photon map and I need to do this by laying down a new mantra node and I'm going to call it photon and to generate a photon map you need to change the rendering engine to photon map generation. The parameters which control how the photon map is generated are here on the PBR tab. The main ones that we're going to be interested in are the photon storage count and the global, fo global photon file. This option, cache stores direct lighting, has disappeared in Houdini 10 but in any case we want to disable it when we're using uh, a photon map with the GI light shader. I'm going to reduce the number of photons just to speed up the render and I'm going to give this uh, a different name. We'll call it Global Room. The options here are to do with how the photon map is optimized for use during the render. 
I'm going to come on later and explain what the significance of these options is, but for the moment we're going to leave them unchanged. If you want uh, to ensure that every time you render one node, another node is rendered before it, you can connect the two. So what will happen now is when we render the mantra one node, the photon map will always be generated first, and then the mantra node will be rendered. But first of all, I'm going to just generate the photon map on its own. As you can see, nothing's happened. Uh, mplay has not appeared, but it will have dumped a file onto disk.